It's time for Family Fun! Watching the goodness of God. It helps you not forget You may not remember all you've heard So a picture's better yet Draw me a story That's from the Word of God Oh, hi there, kids. I was just doing a little cleanup here in the art studio. Come on in, come on in. You know, I bet you you do have cleanup jobs too and little jobs you do around the house to help, don't you? Well, you know, that reminds me of uh, the letter that we're going to have today from Grandpa, and it's called, We're More Than Conquerors. Did you know that Grandpa says that we're in our training right now in preparation for ruling the world with Jesus in the millennium? That's right. And all the things that we're doing right now, the Lord is preparing us for those days. And if you're faithful in these little jobs, then the Lord is going to give you bigger jobs in the days to come. You know, we're one of the few groups in the whole world that is on the attack. We're invading the devil's territory, and we're winning souls and citizens from his kingdom. And Satan hates us for it. And that's why he attacks us every way he possibly can and tries to stop us. But he can't stop us. So don't ever worry and think sometimes that we may be losing. We're not losing. We're winning. Even when it looks like we're losing, we're winning. 
The Bible says, where iniquity doth abound, or, e or evil doth abound, grace doth much more abound. And in those last worst days of all, the coming great tribulation, we're going to be the most powerful witnesses we have ever been. We're going to do great signs and wonders and miracles and supernatural things like we've never done before. The whole world is going to hear about us, which is exactly what has been happening recently when the family has had to go to court and give clear, powerful testimony to the whole world about what we believe, and we've won great victories. Look at these kids here witnessing for Jesus. You know, the more the Antichrist and our enemies try to stop us and get rid of us, the more miraculous our survival will be, and the more publicity the message will get. And with all his power, all his signs and wonders, he won't be able to conquer us. He won't be able to stop us in the tribulation any more than he can stop us right now. Grandpa wants us to remember that the tribulation is not going to be a time of defeat and destruction. It's going to be a time of tremendous battles and terrific war, but as a result, great victories. Victories such as we have never known before. God's Word says, They that do know their God, like you, shall do exploits, and they which understand amongst the people shall instruct many. Exploits are great acts that we will do, just like how Heaven's girl is able to stop her enemies. Look at her stop her enemies here, and do miracles, and heal the sick, and so on. So, don't get down and discouraged about all of the plagues and troubles that the Bible says will happen during the tribulation, because those plagues and judgments are going to fall on the wicked, not on you. See these plagues coming on these followers of the Antichrist? So let's look on the bright side. Let's look on the good side. Let's look at all the victories and all the marvels that God's going to do to protect you in the coming days ahead. He's never failed us yet. Have you ever lacked a meal or a place to stay? Well, if he's kept you through all those days, he's going to keep you through the days ahead. Doesn't that excite you? Doesn't that cheer you up? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi again, everyone. Come in and sit down. It's so nice to see you. This is Thaddeus Tree, and I'd like to tell you today about the gifts of the Spirit from 1 Corinthians 12. Can you name them? The gifts of the Spirit are wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, and interpretation. These are all special spiritual gifts which the Holy Spirit can give you. And the gift that we're going to talk about today is wisdom. Wisdom is a very important gift. It's knowing how to use the knowledge of God, what you already know. The Lord can give you a spirit of wisdom so you can say the right thing at the right time. A word fitly spoken is as apples of gold in pictures of silver. The most important thing to remember about gifts is that they should all be used to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. So pray for these gifts and Jesus will answer. Thank you, Jesus. Bye-bye. Judges of Tomorrow. Do you see these two beautiful people sitting on their thrones? They are judges in a wonderful time soon to come called the Millennium. When they were on earth, these people were very faithful to love and serve their king, Jesus. And because of that, they are now trusted with a big, important job of helping to judge and rule over all the unsaved people left on the earth. Although all of the very wicked people and followers of the Antichrist and those who accepted his mark of the beast will die at the end of the tribulation, there will be many other unsaved people still left on the earth. Some will need to be ruled with a rod of iron like many rich worldly people who were very selfish and unkind to the poor and other people, these people now need to be taught how to be loving and kind to each other. 
But all those who were faithful and worked hard for Jesus, like you're doing now, will be rewarded with positions of responsibility of helping to lead and guide the villagers on the earth, as well as helping with many other important and exciting jobs. One of the first jobs that will need to be done in the millennium will be to gather together all the weapons of war and they will be all destroyed. All the big factories and huge industries that sent so much pollution and fumes into the air and water and anything that could be harmful or dangerous to anyone will all be closed down. Thank you, Jesus! After the rapture, when we have already gone to be with Jesus, all of the huge cities of the world will fall in a super earthquake that Jesus will send to punish the wicked and to bring down all the tall skyscrapers and buildings and proud monuments of man. They will become nothing but piles of rubble and rocks, and pretty soon they will all be grown over with grass and moss and wild flowers. It's going to be a really exciting job to rule over all these people on earth, and Jesus will help us to always be loving, fair, and just. He will give us special powers so that we will be able to read people's minds and see whether they are telling the truth. Or, if we need to, we will be able to send punishment on those who refuse to obey and love each other, like keeping back the rain or even sending plagues on them to help them want to obey. But thank the Lord, most of the people will be very happy and content with the new lives they live in this paradise on earth and find it easy to yield to and obey their judges and rulers. They are so happy that at last there is peace in the world. Praise the Lord! I have a secret friend. She's with me all the time and always tells me sweet things to say and do. She's a lot like a mommy. And when I feel bad or sad, she comforts me. Isn't that a good friend? Well, she can be your friend, too. Would you like that? I'll tell you who she is. She's the Holy Spirit. And one time, when Jesus was baptized, she came down right out of heaven and landed in his shoulder. And the Holy Spirit came down upon him in bodily form like a dove. Did you see that? She was in the form of a beautiful white dove. Uncle Micah knows her too. Here's a song all about my friend, the dove. Thank you, Lord. Bless in Jesus' name. Oh, I know a dove. She's with me all of the time. She brings me faith and love, joy and peace of mind. And when I need help, she's a comfort to me. And she always gives me her song So I can sing the victory Sing the victory mm, The Spirit of God She is my dove She's a special gift from the Lord To help me to share His love Oh, the Lord is my shepherd I'll never, fear. I'll never fear Cause he sent his spirit to me To let me know he's always near He's always near I can hear my dove, I can hear my dove. She reminds me to pray she reminds me to pray. And when I stop and listen to her She'll help me not to go astray and she whispers to me, morning, noon, and night, night, with my dove watching Lord, over me, I know everything will be all right. I know a dove, she's with me all of the time. She brings me faith and love, joy and peace. 
of mine. And when I need help, she's a comfort to me. And she always gives me her song so I can sing the victory. And she always gives me her song so I can sing the victory. A fiery prophet is? Remember Elijah? And Elijah stood up in the midst of all the people and the prophets of Baal and cried out, If God be God, then serve him. And the people didn't answer him a word. They didn't like what he had to say very much because he was socking it to them because they weren't serving God. And then Elijah called down fire from heaven right upon the sacrifice. And that sure woke the people up right away. And then they listened to everything he said. Wow, so a fiery prophet is a prophet with a strong message that the people really need to hear. And he gives it to them. He doesn't always say it so sweetly. Now, sometimes it is a nice, sweet message, but sometimes he has to say it really strongly to shake the people up. David is a fiery prophet. Now, fiery prophets can't be so worried about what the people are going to think. When God gives them a message, they can't say, oh, what, 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 Lord? What, what, what? Oh, oh, no! I can't tell the people that, Lord! They might get upset at me! It's better if I just tell them that they're doing fine, even though I know that they're not. It's better if I just please man rather than you. No. Fiery prophets have to give God's message. David is faithful and obedient to the Lord's voice no matter what the Lord's message is and whether it's a message to us, his children, or to the world. And did you know that God's sheep love to hear God's fiery messages because they know it's the truth and it sets their hearts on fire in the spirit. And like Elijah called down fire from heaven, David gets God's fiery words from heaven to set our hearts on fire for Jesus. <gasps> wow, another heavy message from heaven. I love David's fiery words, don't you? It helps you not forget You may not remember all you've heard So a picture's better yet Draw me a story That's from the Word of God Hi kids Today we have a letter from Grandpa called Show em Jesus Do you know what show em means? Yes You do? What does show em mean? Can you tell us? Show them Show them Show people Jesus and we're gonna see how we can show people Jesus. This is a picture of the millennium. Here's a daddy farmer and a little girl. And did you know that in the millennium, everyone will see the kingdom of God on earth? It will be easier for people to believe in Jesus then because they'll be able to see all the wonderful things that will happen at that time. We've got Space City, they'll be able to see it and flying saucers, and here we'll be flying through the air in our brand new supernatural bodies. Would you like to fly? Yeah. Boy, I can hardly wait. 
Well, but these people won't have as great a blessing as you have because you believe in Jesus even though you've never ever seen him. The Bible says, more blessed are ye who though having not seen, yet have believed. The only way anyone can be saved today is by believing by faith in God's word. Just believing what God said. You know, faith, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing the word of God today. That's one of the basic principles of God's kingdom that you must believe, though having not seen. Like this little boy, he's telling this little girl about God's word. He's witnessing to her. You see that? Yeah. You just heard somebody tell you about the love of Jesus and show you the love of Jesus, and you believed, right? Yes. All by faith. Here's a nice sweet man here. You know, the only proof people can see that Jesus exists today is in the faces of the witnesses. And every one of you is a witness of the word. People look in your faces and they see Jesus and you're all little Jesuses in a way because all of you have Jesus in your hearts and show his love like this little kid is and he's witnessing to this sweet man, see? And here's Jesus. You know, you belong to Jesus. Did you know that? Your body, your mind, your heart, your whole life. And, you know, when Jesus was on the world in the time that he was here, he was the Word of God. It says the Word of God became, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And here's Jesus. And just as Jesus was the Word of God when he was on earth, well, now you are the Word of God while you're still here on earth. See? Are they happy? Yes. And they're witnessing. See, there's the buildings back there. And the airplane. There's the airplane, yes. You carry the word of God and the word of salvation just as much as Jesus did. Well, Dwight L. Moody. Do you know who Dwight L. Moody was? Yes. Yeah. yes. Who was he? Do you know? He was a great, famous evangelist. He was a famous evangelist. Well, he said, the only Bible that the world reads is you and me. And what that means is that uh, a lot of people in the world, they don't read the Bible, but they see what the Christians do. They see what you and I do, and they're watching us to see, you know, what, what we're going to be like. So, Moody was just a young shoe salesman when he started winning souls. Here he is. And he was winning more souls than the Christians in the churches. Oh. So they started to come to him to find out how he did it. And he just tell them, watch me while I'm selling shoes. Watch how I witness. Here's a girl here, and she's getting some shoes. And while he's selling her the shoes and fitting the shoes on her feet, he would just personal witness to people while he sold them shoes. Wasn't that a good idea? Yeah. You just witness wherever you are. Doesn't make any difference. And here's Dwight L. Moody. But you know, Moody would have never become a great soul winner if it hadn't been for an unheard of little nobody called Charles L. Varley. Do you know who he was? No. Well, Charles L. Varley was the person that personal witness to Moody and got him saved, see? And I'm drawing a picture. I don't even really know what Charles L. Varley looks like. But I'll just make a nice, sweet-looking guy here. Moody heard the Word of God, and he saw Jesus in Charles L. Varley. I hope other people see Jesus in you. Every one of you is the living proof of salvation. People can look at you and they see that Jesus saves and has changed your life. And Well, they may have heard of Jesus, but they don't really understand who he was or what he did. And see all these people looking at this little girl. She's got Jesus in her heart and she's witnessing to them. And if we don't reach all these people now, well, they'll get a chance in the millennium. Ooh, here's the millennium. Ooh, look at that. Here's the same little girl in her new body and her halo. And she's got, it's called a magic bubble. A magic bubble. She goes from village to village and she's witnessing to all these different people. We'll have to re-educate the whole world that's left after the tribulation, after the battle of Armageddon, all the people that didn't follow the Antichrist and then didn't get the mark of the beast and they lived through the battle of Armageddon. We'll witness to them. You're going to be the educators and the rulers of the whole world in the millennium. See, she's showing them, here's the fifth day of creation. She says, there's the water, and, and here's the fish, and the birds. And she says, this isn't a movie, folks. This is the real thing. And she's telling about creation. These are the people that never really heard how to get saved, and they really didn't understand Jesus. 
so she's witnessing then. You're going to have during the millennium all kinds of proof then, and the people are going to believe because then they've seen. But right now, you've got a tough job of trying to get people to believe, though having not seen. They may not realize it, but they're seeing the living proof right now when they look into your eyes and your face and they hear your words, just like this little boy here, and there's Jesus inside of you, you have become Jesus Christ to them, the Word of God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And here's the word, world here. When Jesus was here on the earth, there was only how many Jesuses? One. One, One Jesus. But now there are millions of Christians all over the world, and we ought to be showing Jesus to the rest of the world, shouldn't we? Yes. They should be hearing Jesus through us, and Jesus did many wonderful works and miracles, but he said, greater works than these shall ye do. Look at all these kiddos all over the world. My goodness, there's so many of them. Wow. Well, what greater work can you do than telling other people about Jesus and showing Jesus to other people and letting them hear Jesus through you and let them find Jesus through you to get saved? That's the greatest work that anybody can do. So that's the lesson of the letter, show them Jesus. Do others see Jesus in you? I hope so. Bye-bye. We Bye. love you. So bad. Laos is a country in Asia where this exciting story happened. Laos is this country right beside Vietnam. Brother Soban was a real on fire Christian leader in Laos. Everywhere he went, he would always tell people about Jesus. God bless him. When he would have some difficulties, he would often hear the Holy Spirit encouraging him and leading him to keep on following Jesus. This gave him so much power and joy because he knew he was not alone. The comforting Holy Spirit was always with him. At three different times, he was taken to prison by the communists because they didn't want anyone to hear about Jesus. They tried to make Brother Soban stop believing in Jesus by telling him that Jesus was not real and all kinds of lies. But they weren't able to change him at all. He kept standing up for Jesus and witnessing to the other prisoners anyway. Soban was so happy he had learned to listen to Jesus when he was free, so that now, even though he was in prison, he could be happy and have faith. Soban even began to tell the guards about Jesus too. One day, one of the guards received Jesus in his heart and a miracle happened the next day. Some of the leaders of the prison did not like the way Soban kept talking about Jesus, so they decided to kill him. But the Lord did a miracle that day and put the guard that had received Jesus in his heart where the officers had their meeting. The Holy Spirit told the guard, Soban saved you by praying with you to receive Jesus, so now you need to help save Soban and help him find a way to escape. So that night, the guard helped Soban to escape. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Jesus took care of Soban and he had nothing to worry about. Thank you, Lord, for his protection. God bless Soban for being faithful to witness and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus will see us through when we remain faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And He always sends His Holy Spirit to be a help and a comfort to you when you need it. Just stay close to Him like Soban. Amen? Sing me a story! Do you remember the story about Joseph's coat of many colors? Well, someone had to weave that coat. They started with a wooden frame and then they stretched strands of different colored 
wool or cotton across the frame, and then they wove the pieces together till they had a beautiful piece of material, and that later became the coat. Now, in many ways, our lives are like that coat. The Lord weaves different lessons into our lives until we become the material that he wants us to be. And that's what the lesson of this song is about. It's called The Weaver. I came to watch a weaver as he slowly worked his craft. He pulled the strands there in his hands, first this way, then that. And what had first been empty on the broad and barren loom, it took on form and beauty as the threads were pulled and groomed. Well, I thought to ask him why he chose the colors of each strand. But silently he smiled at me. He had a master plan. And what began a hollow span slowly grew in form. Short and tight with shades of night followed by the hues of morn. And as I watched, I understood my days are meant to be One thread upon another, a living tapestry I know the master weaver of our life is in control Of every joy and heartbreak and the care of every soul and if he wants to choose a weave other than the one we've planned, well, it can only be more beautiful coming from his loving hand. The lighter tones would cheer me with colors pure and bright, but the deeper, darker, rich ones touched my heart and held my eyes. You know, it's like the days of sunshine and joy that we have known Seem to owe their warmth and beauty to our dark nights all alone And so every day that passes I know was meant to be One thread upon another A living tapestry I know the master we of our life is in control of every joy and heartbreak and the care of every soul and if he wants to choose a weave other than the one we've planned it could only be more beautiful coming from his loving hand it could only be more beautiful coming from his loving hand by the dolphins. One summer day, eight young friends went for a ride in their boat. They were in the middle of the Indian Ocean, just off the coast of Mozambique in Africa, when all of a sudden, a huge storm hit. Rain poured down in torrents. The sky was bright from the lightning flashes and thunder rumbled. The little boat was tossed back and forth in the huge waves and finally broke up altogether. The eight friends were tossed into the swelling sea. A girl named Vera called out to the others. There must be land not too far away. I'm a strong swimmer, so I'll try and go get help. It probably would have been better if someone else swam with her. But the others were quite tired and not very good swimmers, so Vera set off alone. But after she swam several miles, Vera suddenly saw shadows looming around her. Six large sharks began to circle in the water, coming closer and closer. Jesus, Vera prayed, please help me. I claim the verse, he sent from above. 
He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from the strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. No sooner had she finished praying than out of nowhere two dolphins appeared and began to swim along with her, one on either side. On they swam, and though Vera was so tired, each time she began to doze off, which would have been very dangerous in the water, one of the dolphins would gently nudge her to wake her up again, and they swam on together. Not long after this, to Vera's great relief, she saw a boat. When the people on the boat saw Vera in the water, waving to them, they helped her on board and got her all warmed and dried off. Then they went back to rescue her friends. So there's a happy ending to our true story, thanks to the miracle of the dolphins. The Wind and the Sun. I'm pretending to be the wind. And I have a story for you about the wind and the sun. Well, one day, the wind said to the sun, I am much more powerful than you and I'll prove it to you. See the traveler over there? Well, I can get his coat off much more quickly than you can. <sighs> well, said the sun, I don't think so, but I'll let you try first. So the wind blew and blew with all his strength. But it only made the traveling man put his coat more closely around him. At last, the wind said, I give up. I can't make that man take his coat off. You try. So the sun tried, and the sun just shone and shone as brightly as it could. And the traveling man got so hot, he took off his coat. I won, said the sun. I made the man take his coat off first. Well, there's a little point to the story that I told you. And that is that love and kindness, like the sun, is much more powerful than the wind by force. Little verse popped into my head and it says not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord well that's what the Lord wants us to be like like the Sun and the Spirit just shining with his love and kindness <laughs> Different from the world that you see? Here's an example. In our family we... Witness. Witnessing is such an important part of our lives. Grandpa says that our number one job is to preach the gospel. And that's witnessing. Because each person that receives Jesus into their hearts will come with us to heaven. Have you ever witnessed to somebody who didn't really want to ask Jesus into their heart? Well, Grandpa says that if you witness, you always win. So even if the person you witnessed to didn't receive Jesus right there on the spot, sooner or later, because you planted that little seed of Jesus' love, it will start to grow. And even if somebody doesn't receive our witness at all, we don't need to worry. Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19 says that we are God's watchmen. We're to warn the people of the world and tell them about Jesus, but then it's their decision if they want to receive him or not. If we tell them and they decide not to, then at least we obeyed God. 
and He will hold them responsible for their decision. But if we don't obey the Lord and witness, then we could be the ones responsible, and it could be our fault if they don't go to heaven. Lord, help us to be faithful witnesses. One special thing about our family is that we are witnessing all the time. No matter where we are, we're always witnessing. The Bible says to be instant, in season and out of season. Anytime we see someone who looks like they might need Jesus, no matter what we're doing, we should witness to them. Or if you can't always stop and witness to them, at least you can give them a big smile and that tells them Jesus loves you. It's like the grandpa quote that says, you can always drop a little bit of love, Jesus' love, into the hearts of those you pass on your way, even if just a little smile, and they will know that God has loved them that day. It's exciting to witness and tell people about Jesus, but we can't always go out witnessing. So, do you know what you can do when you can't go out? You can pray for those that are out witnessing. Ask your parents or teachers, who is out witnessing today? And then you can pray for them to have a fun, inspiring day and win lots of souls. Praise the Lord. The sides of the can were shiny and steep. The cream was deep and cold. Oh, what's the use? Broke number one. We're lost, no helps around. Goodbye, my friend, this is the end. And sinking in, he drowned. <laughs> but number two, who wasn't through, refused to compromise. He jutted out his creamy chin and dried his creamy eyes. I'll keep on swimming where there's life, there's always hope, he said. It really wouldn't help the world if one more frog were dead. Don't give up when you're sinking and feeling down. Don't give up when you're sinking, you don't have to drown. Don't give up when you're sinking and feeling down. Don't give up when you're sinking, you don't have to drown. For many an hour he kicked and splashed, at last he stopped to sputter. Why, look at that, I can hop right out, I whipped the cream to butter. So if sometimes your problems make you feel you want to scream, remember how the froggy turned butter out of cream. Don't give up when you're sinking and feeling down. Don't give up when you're sinking, you don't have to drown. Don't give up when you're sinking and feeling down. Don't, don't you give up. Don't give up when you're sinking, you don't have to drown. You don't have to drown. You don't have to drown. It feels to be clean. Uh, here's some healthy habits. Tips from Grandpa. Get that fly. There's nothing that flies love more than garbage and ugh, sewage. They just love it. They eat it and crawl all over it. And then they come flying over your garden wall and crawl into the baby's mouth and around the lip of your cup or across your fresh eggs on the plate. And then you stick your food or the cup in your mouth and you've had it. Flies carry all kinds of sicknesses, almost everything you can think of. Grandpa hates them and he goes after them. Flies are like demons and infect you. It's just unforgivable to allow flies around the house or in the kitchen or where there's food. Keep those doors shut and keep the flies out or kill them. 
So now, when you see a fly, just remember what it's been crawling on. And keep in mind that every fly you see is loaded with germs that could make you very sick. So, chase that fly until you've got him. And don't let another one into the house. Remember, it's godliness to be clean. Walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Letters from Our Shepherds Keep on believing. Maria and I were walking along on a desert highway through a dry, desert-like country. We seemed to have gotten lost and were trying to find our way. Suddenly, we came upon this little white roadway and just a short distance away was a beautiful gate that was a building in itself. Through the gate, we could see some beautiful green, grassy lawns and trees and flowers that looked just like a golf course. And immediately, I knew that it was a country club. Do you know what a country club is? It's a club out in the countryside where people play outdoor sports like golf and horseback riding and things like that. Well, as we walked on through the lovely arched gate, it was almost as though in passing through it, we had entered into another world. We were so happy and relieved and were thanking the Lord that we would soon find our way. And then we saw this beautiful roadway with tall trees on each side leading off into the distance toward a lovely little country town, which was only a few minutes walk away. But by this time, I was very, very tired because we'd already walked a long way in that hot, dry land. And I looked at Maria wondering, how are we going to walk that much further? But as I looked around toward the clubhouse, I saw a bus coming. Our hearts leaped with joy as we thought, thank God, a bus. Now we won't have to walk all the way into town. So we started walking quickly toward the roadway. But we had not acted soon enough. We had stood there too long trying to read the sign on the bus to see where it was going and it had picked up speed more rapidly than we'd expected. We began to run, but soon it disappeared down the hill. Our hearts sank because we realized we had not started for it soon enough and it had gotten away from us. And suddenly, a voice seemed to say, you didn't have enough faith. We missed it because of our dilly-dallying, shilly-shallying, and hesitating. And I was so disappointed and so sad that I nearly sank down on the grass in tears. Then, suddenly, I heard voices sounding just like my father and mother, just the way they used to sing these two beautiful choruses to us kids whenever we were discouraged. Peace. 
Keep on believing God answers prayer. Keep on believing He's still up there. Troubles and sorrows will soon disappear. Nothing can harm you when Jesus is near. Keep on believing the storm will pass. Look for the rain, but will come at last. Trust in His promise was written for you. Keep on believing and praise your way through. Keep on believing and praise your way through. Keep on believing Jesus is here. Keep on believing there's nothing to fear. Keep on believing this is the way faith in the night as well as the day if it hadn't been for those two songs I think I would have almost given up but with those songs echoing in my heart I was encouraged not to give up that the Lord was still with us and would help us even though we'd been weak in faith then I knew the Lord would still take care of us somehow. That bus represented the highest and best will of God, the fastest way to get to where we were going. If we'd had more faith, we could have run and jumped on the bus of God's will, and it would have whisked us away to our heavenly destination. So, this dream certainly was teaching a lesson that even though you may have left the dry desert wastelands of the world and sin and passed through the beautiful open gate of salvation, through the open door of Jesus, even though you may be living a heavenly life for Him, you can still miss God's highest and best will if you're not prayerful and full of faith. But... Even if you have somehow missed God's will and a golden opportunity has passed you by and you're sad and discouraged, listen. Lift an ear to those heavenly voices that are singing to encourage you that all hope is not gone. Maybe you just need to read the Word more to encourage your faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Even if you didn't have enough faith, it's not too late to ask God to forgive you. And if you're truly sorry, you can ask Him for another chance, and I'm sure He'll send another bus, another chance to do His will. So, keep on believing. Don't ever give up. Keep on holding on to His promises. And whatever you do, keep on going for Jesus. Amen? Hurry up now. Just have faith and catch God's bus. Through a dry and dusty country, lost and searching we came Until we found the narrow pathway to salvation so relieved and happy for this new beautiful place And the road that led to what seemed like the heavenly city But we were tired and weary and looking for a way to go The only bus that came along we missed from moving too slow And I nearly sank down in despair, how would we ever make it now? And someone said, you need more faith But where there's life, there's hope So keep on, keep on believing Don't let that chance pass you by Keep on, keep on believing Don't give up your faith, try one more time Take those golden opportunities before they're gone Don't wait and 
hesitate until those doubts come along Take that chance while you can and let it take you away On its wings to your heavenly destination But if you've missed it somehow and don't know who to turn to now Don't give up, lift your ears to the heavens I know that hope is sure not gone And I know another will come along Listen to those beautiful songs And believe And believe Keep on, keep on believing Don't let that chance pass you by Keep on, keep on believing Thank you, Jesus, for all the miracles that you are doing for us and for all of our family around the world. Thank you for this time to share some of them and to glorify you through it and show what wonders you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. It's so nice to be back with you again. I'm Jamie, and today we're going to hear some testimonies about witnessing in different languages. Let's start with a story from Jet Michael, who's going to tell us what happened to him when he was only six years old. When I was six years old, I was living in Taiwan. They speak Chinese there. My parents and I went out to eat in a restaurant with one of our Chinese friends. There was another Chinese man sitting right next to us, and I wanted to witness to him, but I didn't speak any Chinese. So I asked our Chinese friend to write down a question for me in Chinese on a piece of paper. She wrote, Do you want to know Jesus? And do you want to go to heaven? I showed them to the Chinese man, and he smiled, and he was very sweet. So our friend wrote down the salvation prayer for me in Chinese, and I showed it to the man and asked him if he wanted to pray and ask Jesus in his heart, and he did. Then the sweet man showed the paper to another friend of his, who also got saved. The Chinese friend that we had come to dinner with wasn't saved yet either, so we prayed with her to receive Jesus that night, and she also got the Holy Spirit. What a miracle! Three Chinese people asked Jesus into their heart without me even speaking a word of the language. Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Michael. That was really an inspiring testimony. If you do your part, the Lord can do the rest. Little is much if God is in it, and God can use almost anything to accomplish His purpose. If you'll step out by faith and do your part, the Lord can really do miracles for you. And that's what happened to seven-year-old Adam in Brazil. And we have this report from Tina. Well, Adam was seven years old, and he lived in Brazil. But he didn't speak Portuguese. One day, he went out witnessing with his family, and he really wanted to be able to witness to people too, and get them saved. So he asked his daddy to teach him how to win souls in Portuguese. Once he learned, Adam started trying to talk to people in Portuguese. It was a little hard at first, but as he kept trying, Adam could speak Portuguese better and better. And pretty soon, the Lord had used him to win 45 souls to the Lord. What a testimony! Thank you, Jesus! Wow! It's amazing how much the Lord can do if we just let Him. Now here's another exciting witnessing testimony from two children who grew up in Thailand, and they learned how to speak Thai and the Lord used them to win lots and lots of souls in that country. This is one of their exciting witnessing adventures, and the story is told by our correspondent, Katrina. Take it away, Katrina. This is from Juden Fafa in Thailand. One day, they were traveling with their parents on a train, and there was a family with three children who were also traveling on the same train. 
Jude sat next to a boy who was fourteen years old. The boy was very sheepy, and when Jude asked him if he had already received Jesus in his heart, he said no. The boy said that he would like to, so Jude prayed with him right there to receive Jesus. Fafa was sitting next to this boy's two sisters. Just as the girls were about to get off the train, Fafa asked them if they wanted to have Jesus in their hearts and go to heaven. And they said yes. And they both prayed, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good lesson on how the Lord can use you to witness any time. The Bible says that we should be instant in season and out of season. That means that when we see anybody who needs Jesus, we should stop and witness to them. Well, it's time for me to go now, but you can remember all the children that are witnessing in other countries and pray for them that they can win lots of souls. Amen? Bye for now. I'll see you next time. It's time for...